Hello and welcome to today's SHRM certification exam panel discussion. It's an absolute pleasure to be with all of you here today and with our awesome panelists. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's start first. My name is Christina Danforth. Your host for today's session is HR Jetpack. And I'd just like to take a moment to point out our social media channels down there at the bottom of the screen. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And also feel free to send me a LinkedIn invitation as well. I am absolutely happy to connect with many folks as I can to talk about the certification and to talk about other very important topics for an HR professional. So I'm going to do a quick introduction here of our panelists and I am going to start first with Haley Bonapane. So Haley uh, joins us from the lovely area, the greater Boston area of Massachusetts, <laughs> up north of us. She has nearly <laughs> two decades in HR and is a subject matter expert with a specialty in workplace planning and development, employee relations, organizational development, and talent acquisition. Her experience spans across a variety of industries in which she provides both tactical support and strategic guidance as a consultant, teacher, trainer, and coach. She's taught the SHRM certification exam prep course as an instructor with HR Jetpack, and of course, is gonna be teaching again this semester, starting in February. And really appreciate your joining us, Haley. Welcome. Yes, thank you so much, Christina. It's really good to be with you. And hello, everyone. I'm, I'm happy to see that there are several of you on the call to talk about this really uh, cool and important thing for us as HR professionals. Absolutely. Great. Great. So moving on to Dennis Carr, also a very experienced instructor, teacher from the certification exam prep course realm. He's been doing this since 2006 and is also teaching with HR Jetpack and has been teaching with HR Jetpack and has a couple of courses starting up again in February. Well over 250 HR pros have successfully passed their SHRM certification exams after completing one of Dennis's classes. He strives for a 100% passing rate for all of his HR professionals that he works with. He's currently the CHRO for Lane Community College, and we welcome him from the other side of the US out there in Eugene, Oregon. So thanks for joining us, Dennis. Thanks for the invitation, my pleasure. Hi, great. And then finally, we have Cheryl. She's also a very experienced educator, an adjunct faculty member for two universities, and an experienced certification exam prep course facilitator, and will be working with HR Jetpack as well. So Cheryl, with more than 20 years of experience is a very accomplished strategic HR business partner, uh, applying best practices of HR management and HR development across a variety of industries globally. She's also the director of internal membership for Go Sherm, joining us from Orlando, Florida. So I think we've we've covered all over here in the US. So thanks for being here, Cheryl. Thank you for inviting me. It's my honor and pleasure to be here to support the great things happening with HR Jetpack. Yay! <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Fabulous. Wait, so let's get into it here, right? And as I mentioned before, if someone has a question or a comment, please feel free to use the chat section. And we'll keep our eye on that for any of those questions. And we're gonna to come to them and come back to them towards the end of some of the official questions that we've received since setting up this discussion. So let's get into it. The SHRM <laughs> certification has just blown up. I recently saw a statistic that 5,000 employers are looking for the SHRM certification every month as a part of their job qualification. You know, one of the reasons why I got my SHRM certification as an HR professional is because I wanted to show my commitment 
to the profession. And I also wanted that opportunity to, to learn and even relearn um, everything there is to know about HR, which is a part of the curriculum that you go through, the intense curriculum that you go through when you are prepping for this exam. So, why the SHRM certification? My first question goes over to you, Haley. Why do you think it's important to earn a SHRM certification? Yeah, well, okay, so you just did a really great intro to that, Christina, and um, certainly 5,000 um, employers is startling, really, when you think about that number and just how, um, you know, massive that really is, right, um, and how I think it really demonstrates the importance nowadays of the human resource function. Because as we know, as HR people, it's certainly changed over the last five to 10 years of what the HR function looks like. So, all right. So why do we think it's important to earn a uh, certificate? OK, so first of all, we'll just say that obviously nowadays it's super competitive out there. Right. We know that companies are doing everything they possibly can to get that competitive advantage one of which they want their people to be as skilled and as talented as they possibly can be. They want their people to be subject matter experts. And so as it relates to the HR certificate, you know, that really demonstrates that level of expertise. So a few other reasons as well, you know, first of all, I believe that having the HR uh, cert, uh, cert, excuse me, it really makes you stand out, right, against other candidates and so forth. Secondly, I truly believe that it's going to help with your professional confidence and also satisfaction. Uh, third, I also think it's probably going to put more money in your pocket, right? Um, uh. <laughs> you know, and who doesn't like who doesn't like a fatter pocket, right? So the earning potential, um, you know, after you have received that certificate, I mean, certificate is great. You know, I, I can tell you from a personal story um, that I, I definitely saw a very, um, a very nice, um, uh, you know, a very nice salary after I went and got that certification. So, so for us, um, you know, I also want to talk about how you're looked upon in the organization as well. I think if you, as the HR manager, generalist, director, whatever level you may be, if you go ahead and you work really hard and you study and you pass, the chances are people in your organization are going to look at you like, wow, she really knows what she's she's doing, or he really, you know, this person really understands what they're doing. They understand the HR function holistically. Also, if you're in a position that you know, perhaps you are looking for a new job. If you have the certification on your resume, the chances are hiring managers are going to look at your resume just a little bit closer. They're going to say, you know what, this person not only has the knowledge and the skills that they've acquired for X amount of years they've been doing it, but they've also taken it upon themselves to go and get certified. So let's put this resume in the A pile and let's have a further conversation with the person. So really, there's many positive reasons to do this certification. I could probably go on forever, but I won't. But that's just a few of them um, to start with. Awesome. Great. Great. Thank you. Thanks for your thoughts. And so, you know, I'll ask Dennis and Cheryl, you know, do either of you have anything to, to add to that? I mean, a lot of great. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, yeah, Haley hit it on the head. Uh, so I'll just add a couple of uh, observations from my perspective, having worked with professionals that were seeking certification now for 10 years. Um, and I also want to leave room for Cheryl just for a, a couple of additions. But uh, I, I would tell you the following. Um, it took me a year or two to realize when I first began uh, facilitating uh, HR professional certification courses to realize that I needed to uh, look at my own uh, direct reports as well. And in about 2008 or so, um, we all uh, in my entire um, HR department, it's not huge, but it's, it's 13 people. 
um, we all went through the certification process. The outcome of that was that I have an, an entirely 100% certified um, staff now. We can speak a common language. Uh, we are invited to far more strategic conversations. Ask yourself the question as an HR professional, how often do you get invited to uh, the finance department or the sales department or the, you know, the executive uh, suite uh, of an organization to talk about compliance? The answer is only when there's a problem. Yeah. However, however, uh, and, and I'm speaking from personal experience uh, because in that certification process, we also went through a reorganization where we became a direct report function to the president, in my case, the president uh, of the college. Um, previously, we had reported through uh, finance. So I can tell you from both uh, professional experience, uh, but also from having facilitated this content that uh, we get invited now to strategic conversations and competency based conversations and organizational development conversations that we never got invited to before. I can't tell you how different that is in terms of practicing HR uh, on a professional level um, than just simply being the reactive compliance component of an organization. Um, so I'm going to stop there because uh, that's transformational in, in and of itself. Wow. 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 That's awesome. awesome. So Cheryl, I'll pass the mic to you. You know, any, any other thoughts that you have from your perspective? Well, to, to follow up on the excellent comments by both Haley and Dennis, I just want to say here in greater Orlando area, we had the privilege of hosting Johnny C. Taylor Jr. this past Tuesday evening. He was uh, visiting our local chapter meeting and he spoke for about 45 minutes. And wow. one of the things he, he shared with us is, is completely supportive of what we're talking about today. Uh, from the management, from the human resource management perspective, the, the CEOs are saying we live in a VUCA world. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with the acronym. VUCA is an acronym, V-U-C-A, that stands for volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And that concept started with the U.S. military, but now is taught in, in management schools across the country. And his perspective was he wanted us as HR professionals to realize the importance of being able to demonstrate to the managers and the leaders of the organizations that we are keeping up with change. And, and so it, the certification supports that because a part of the certification process is getting recertified and maintaining that through continuing education, which speaks of our ability to stay current as professionals in our field and translate that knowledge and, and knowledge of those best practices to those with whom we work in the organization. So ditto, ditto to Haley and, and to Dennis. And just to add, you know, that context from Johnny C. Taylor, we've got to demonstrate that we're keeping up with the external and internal and the pace of change and the certification really does sort of put a seal of approval that we've done that and we do that and we'll continue to do that. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's so interesting, Cheryl. I could... I could go off on other questions there, but I, <laughs> I know I've got to stick to the, the some of the major ones that we've got. That's so cool. Thank, thank you all for your perspectives on that. Wonderful. All right. So let's get into taking the exam. All right. I get a lot of logistical questions, so I'm going to answer a few of the common ones here very quickly. So I get you know, what type of questions are on the exam now? It's multiple choice, 160 questions, so there's no essay. And I, I've got some folks who are relieved when they hear that and some folks that, you know, wish there was a writing part. But there isn't. It's only multiple choice. Um, what type of, oh, how long is the exam? Four hours. Four hours and there's no breaks. The time <laughs> keeps going. So, common question. Where do I take the exam? So SHRM partners with an organization called Prometric. So that is a testing facility and there are a number of them all over the world. So they're spread all over the place. 
is it open book? It is not an open book exam. In fact, you leave all your personal belongings in a locker within the testing facility outside of the testing room. So a lot of security, right? Now, my next official question here, I'm gonna go to you, Dennis, with this one first. You've taken these exams multiple times. What can you tell us about your experience with the exam and even the environment and what that was like? Sure. Um, well, I, I take the exam uh, as often as possible, um, sometimes even more frequently than necessary to recertify because I want to stay current with uh, the way in which Sherm is structuring the exam and, and asking the questions um, each and every time. <laughs> It is a unique uh, and new experience, even for a person who has facilitated the uh, best practice content for 12 years. Um, my most recent testing experience was uh, June 1st uh, of this year, June 1st uh, of last year, rather, June 1st uh, of 2018. Uh, I recertified by passing the uh, SCP exam. I have the same experience every single time. And that is I get to about question 20 or so, uh, question 25, and I find a need to push myself away from the cubicle for a minute and reflect. Um, I know this stuff. I teach this stuff. I know I can answer these questions um, confidently. Uh, and nevertheless, it is a very rigorous exam. Um, it's not unusual for HR professionals, including those of us that teach this content and, and read the curriculum on a regular basis, uh, to not be absolutely certain about uh, our selection of the correct HR best practice answer to each question. And so um, I have that experience every single time, had that same experience uh, on June 1st of 2018. Uh, and so I began about for four to six years ago to adopt a practice of orienting one's mental mindset uh, in a way that prepares them for that testing experience uh, because it's not sufficient, my humble opinion, to know the HR best practices, the content knowledge, uh, or be very, very familiar with the HR behavioral competencies. That's not sufficient. Um, I believe it takes a mental mindset um, different perhaps than the mental mindset that I carry around in my own organization or as a uh, three decades now practicing HR professional, I have to have um, a, a, a focused mindset uh, that is thinking big HR, sure best practices, uh, sometimes academically oriented best practices. In other words, um, I may not be able to implement that best practice in my workplace at a perfect level, um, but knowing that HR best practice certainly informs my practical uh, um, uh, practice of HR uh, in the workplace. But I've got to have that absolutely best practice mindset uh, in the testing cubicle. And I kind of sometimes need to set aside uh, the practical way in which I might practice HR. Um, and then that last but not least, I would say beyond the shadow of a doubt, this is an endurance test um, and, I, and I always recommend to HR professionals that I work with, we must start with the end in mind right at the very beginning of the test preparation process. I recommend long study sessions, long test taking sessions, because until you go through that third or fourth hour of for example, taking the pre-course assessment exam uh, or any of the longer exams that are provided in the, in the uh, online uh, SHRM learning system materials until you go through that third or four hour, uh, third or fourth hour of focused um, uh, question answering, you really won't know what it feels like at hour two or hour three uh, of your actual certification exam. And you do not want to be having that experience on your exam day, trust me. So I, I always encourage people to start with the end in mind. Focused intention, one question at a time. Um, practice with the end in mind. Yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and you, you hit the nail on the head in terms of some of those questions and how we have to have a certain mindset. You know, whenever I start my classes, it's one of the first things I talk about the very first night is how we have to have a best practices mindset. 
And so for those of you who are attending, you, you're probably going to hear that a few times and you'll understand what that is, means even more so when you start taking those practice questions and you start looking at some of the answers. And so you know, quickly, I'll, I'll turn to you, Cheryl, and you, Haley, if you have anything that you'd like to add before I get into my next uh, common question here. Well, I'll just speak briefly so thank you Dennis that was just an amazing overview and for me coming from an academic background I think it's important for um, folks to understand that this this exam was compiled based on best practices from businesses but also based upon research from three universities or four universities and so the questions have been designed with a certain level of rigor in mind, not just from the duration of the exam, but for the challenge, the perspective of challenge and rigor. And they're continuing to uh, evolve and, and fine tune, if you will, these questions. So among the 160 multiple choice questions that are a part of the exam, they're always testing what should become potential or future exam questions. Now, the good news is among those 30 or so field test questions that are included. They are not counted. They are not graded. Unfortunately, you will not know which ones are the test questions, but uh, there should be some level of comfort from knowing that in there, there are at least 30 questions that are not being counted. So I wanted to encourage uh, the folks about that. And then just to let them know, it is a very comprehensive exam, and that's why it takes four hours to go through it because they're they're uh, covering you know all fifteen functional areas of human resources, and there's questions from all of those. And of course, there are areas that we're all strong in, and there are areas that we could really use some support uh, to help find our way through those and to begin to understand and be able to apply those best practices. And that's where the, the, the HR Jetpack program, the SHRM body of knowledge, all of the resources that are available to you will help you uh, be able to become more comfortable and strong in those areas in which you may not have the opportunity to work day by day. But the exam is about 50% each knowledge-based, uh, also, the, uh, with respect to your ability to apply decision-making capabilities, uh, behavioral competencies, in, in addition to the knowledge, it's about 50-50 or 60-40, or depending upon uh, your source for that information. So, if you're if you're doing the work to to acquire the knowledge, and we will support you to do that. And then through the scenario-based questions, you'll have the opportunity to demonstrate understanding and the ability to apply those. And we will teach you tips and techniques and, and tools that you can use to facilitate your ability to do that comfortably and competently and confidently. So, you know, that pretty much is how it, the test has been aligned, aligned to, and they have within those questions, even though the breakout would be about the same for the SCP versus the CP uh, candidates. You know, the numbers of those breakup of those uh, divisions of questions would be about the same for both credentials, but the type of questions will be a little different because, of course, your SCP folks are more engaged with strategy and, and the you know more of the uh, strategic business operations, whereas your CP folks are more engaged in the functional and the application of the, of the role and responsibilities day to day. So those questions will look a little different, but the breakout of those is about the same for uh, regardless of the type of credential that you're pursuing. Awesome, great, great, thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. And I'm gonna come back to you in just a moment, follow up for a sec. Um, so just to ask you, Haley, if you any, have anything else that you'd like to add, or if you feel like Dennis and Cheryl have, have covered it in terms of the exam field. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that the two of them did a wonderful job. So I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to take up any more airtime. Um, but I'm glad that I'm glad that Cheryl did mention about the pilot projects um, because that that has come up quite frequently with me um, as an instructor. That hey, what what's the pilot questions about? You know, why do they even do them? You know, and so forth. So I think that I think that you know, in a nutshell, they do them because it's a testament to how serious 
you know, trim is about, you know, keeping up with with relevant material and questions. And, you know, I, I know that they uh, hire, you know, or actually ask for volunteers from the HR community on a yearly basis to go and sit on, you know, uh, boards and, and look at the questions and really determine if the questions are, are relevant or not. So, but yeah, so, so that, that's it for that question for me. But, you know, great overview, Dennis and Carol, of that question. Absolutely great. Yes. Well, thank you. And thanks for, for adding your comments too there. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll go back to you, Cheryl. So you, you hit upon the questions, you mentioned the pilot questions, and then you, you kind of, you snuck in there a little bit and talking about the situational judgment questions, which might be new to some folks. And then the knowledge items, sometimes they refer to the questions of items. That's a, that's a little terminology for folks on the line here if you're not familiar with that yet but you'll see that word item um, in some of the content and that refers to a question uh, so i mean what are your thoughts cheryl on those situational judgment items i mean you know in a moment ago we were talking about best practices yeah. and it's like well, wait a minute how do those two yeah. come together what like what are your thoughts on that my thoughts are that that is why we folks need to take classes such as the ones we're offering to them because there's almost a science behind how to interpret those questions. Competencies, and this is what Sherm is really focusing on are competencies, right? So competencies require a combination of core knowledge that you need to be able to uh, uh, demonstrate to, that you have a base of knowledge and understanding of, of certain uh, best practices, and then the ability to apply that in a real world setting. So those questions are, do, are, are situational in nature, right? They present a situation. Now, there are almost always at least two answers to those situational questions that you can throw out right at a glance. They probably have very little to no apl uh, application to the correct answer. But this is where it gets tricky. So they will narrow it down to about two responses that, well, you know, th this is more challenging because they're both good answers. But what you will learn and what we will help you grow more confident in, in understanding is that there is a best answer that, that has been determined by the based on the best practices that have been incorporated into this and so there's a lot of integration between the the knowledge and the uh, among the if you look at the sherm model right there's this wheel with all of these different areas and dimensions of knowledge and they overlap and they integrate and you will find the concept flow from one specialty to or one function to another. But by working with us and practicing, we will help you understand not only what is a good answer, but we will help you understand and be confident in identifying the best answer. And you will uh, be able to then transfer the knowledge back into your work Place. And this reinforces the comments that we spoke earlier about the value of the certification, because it's not only that you are able to successfully pass the exam, but the expectation is that you're really acquiring the knowledge so that you can transfer it back into the workplace. And those scenario based judgment questions will demonstrate that you have the ability to do that. Awesome. Yeah. And it's just so interesting. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of, you know, the classes that I've had and I've told people, I said, I realized that, you know, the nine pounds, literally the package of nine pounds that you get in the mail, um, that's actually something, those books, you can use them even for reference after. Oh, session. absolutely. You know, even though that you're thinking like, oh, <laughs> I, can't, I can't want to put that away. I, I did that for, you know, so many hours and studied hard and I passed. Um, but yeah, and I have folks who I've had in class who have said, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to use this. I'm going to bring it home right into my office and, and use this um, as a part of our practices. So it can go beyond just just preparing for the certification. So, I mean, you hit a, it hit a great point there. Cheryl, you know, and I'll, I'll ask you, 
um, you know, Haley and Dennis, if, if you've got anything else that, that you'd like to add. No, Dennis? Right. Yep. Well, uh, absolutely true what Christina just said, and that is that the, the curriculum becomes a resource for years and years and years. <laughs> successfully passed your certification. So that's spot on correct. Uh, it's a great resource. There's a depth of uh, bibliography at the end of each of the four books. Very, very useful uh, for years to come. Um, and I, I would go so far as to say that every HR professional that I've worked with uh, over these past 10 to 12 years feels as though they are a better HR professional from having gone through the test preparation experience and the testing experience. Um, and that's, you know, we, I, I strive for 100% passing rate. I don't quite get there, um, probably in the 90% range. And I'll talk about that uh, in answer to how to prepare for the test in a second. Um, but, but even those uh, HR professionals that come up short, uh, are disappointed, uh, maybe they wish they'd studied harder or whatever, they still come away uh, substantially uh, better informed HR professionals uh, and thankful for the test experience. Awesome. Yeah, and so as a matter of fact, speaking of preparation, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna turn my attention officially to you, Haley. <laughs> so you know, so some folks on the line here, you know, and some folks that might be listening to this recording afterwards, you might be saying to yourself, listen, I've been an HR pro for 30 years. I have a great deal, awesome experience in the human resources function. Do I really need to prepare for this exam? And so my official question to you, Haley, is can I just go in to the ProMetric Testing Center and just you know, take this exam? You know, what, are, what are your thoughts on that in response to a student who might be feeling that way? Uh, well, so the answer is no, you can't just go <laughs> I know. It's like, well, it's pretty straightforward, right? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I'm not sure how I could be any clearer than that. So, yeah. So, you know, so do HR uh, experience HR professionals need to Absolutely. And I cannot stress that enough. I, I tell my students the same thing over and over. You know, a lot of the students that, you know, we have had collectively, are people that have been doing HR for many, many, many years. And in some right. cases, folks that have been doing it 20 years longer than I have been doing right. it, you know? And, and so, but the point is, is that you have to take the study, study very seriously. You have to take a course, you, you gotta do it because otherwise, you might not get the result that you're looking for, you know, and 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 I understand that there is that sort of common misconception out there that hey, you know what, I'm a seasons seasons HR professional, HR professional, I've seen it all, I've done it all, I get it, um, so I'm gonna just pass the exam, right? And, and so, and I, you know, I respect people that have got many years of experience. I respect people that have got many years of knowledge, and that has completely contributed to to how successful you are and have been in your career. But here's the thing, while your knowledge and experience are assets, that doesn't necessarily compute into, you know, taking and passing the SHRM exam. And, you know, the exam is based on specific material, right, that SHRM has decided on is the most relevant to to HR professionals today. So it's imperative that you study that specific material in order to get a pass, right? And, and that seems probably really common sense-ish, um, but it is amazing how many people say, oh no, I, I don't need to take a, I don't need to take a, a study class. I, I, why would I do that? That's, that's a waste of money. And it's like, absolutely not a waste of money it's probably the best investment that you can make you know so um absolutely i can't stress enough people need need to uh need to prepare for the exam for sure yeah and, and again to your point you think like okay well this is this should this is something that people would think is is, is like a like common sense right like well of course however um absolutely i've known some hr pros who um, thought literally thought like oh okay well i'm just gonna go and take the exam and see what happens and 
I didn't pass um, because I didn't fully understand, you know, what's in those nine pounds of books <laughs> and what's online. I mean, the, the, the online tools to prepare for this um, are pretty extensive uh, in terms of, of what becomes available to you, um, you know, through the learning system. So there's a lot to this and there's a lot of understanding where um, we have to find that balance between that all that experience and what's the best answer on the exam and sometimes they're the same thing and sometimes they're not <laughs> and that's what i think can be so confusing at times for folks when we first you know start working with people or when people first start using uh the learning system so um i, I think you all know what i'm, I'm going to do i'm actually going to go first over to dennis and then down to cheryl you know, what are your thoughts on the best way to prepare for this exam? I mean, what do you think? You can't just be an awesome HR person. Uh, no, that's not sufficient. And I'm just going to use as a prop the new curriculum. Uh, let me get it, it queued up there. there. On, on page uh, nine of the new curriculum, I don't pretend to always memorize where this page falls in, uh, in each version. But there's a table that uh, articulates uh, precisely what the national passing rate is. And I'll just tell you, uh, May, May through July of 2018, when I took and, and, and passed um, for the, I don't know, third time or so, my uh, SCP exam, the passing rate nationally was 50%, 50%. Passing rate on the CP exam was 66%. And as I tell my students uh, year after year after year, don't be intimidated by those relatively low passing rates. One, we want as professionals, we want a rigorous exam. Two, it's in your best interest that this be difficult to pass, therefore uh, magnifying the accomplishment that you have achieved when you do pass your CP or SCP exam. And three, these statistics include people that we just referred to who were and i'm I, i'm respectful of them but full enough of themselves that they thought two decades of hr best practice two days uh, two decades of hr working in a large complex organization i don't need to prepare for the test i'm just going to walk in and and i'm going to ace it not a chance um, so these statistics on the national passing rate include uh, folks who did self-study, uh, and I'm not criticizing, by the way, that path, but you need to be rigorous about your self-study. I'm also not criticizing chapter uh, um, uh, preparation groups because many of them are well organized. And nevertheless, do they include facilitation by people who are rigorous about using the curriculum and rigorous about understanding uh, how it is the test is structured and what the nuances are in terms of that best practice mindset. In other words, what I'm saying is these statistics at 67, 66% uh, passing rate for CP and 50% passing rate for SCP include persons that did not go through a rigorous testing process. And so those of us that appreciate organizations like HR Jetpack and other professional organizations that provide a rigorous test pre preparation process, those, those persons that go through those classes are included in these statistics. Um, and I guarantee you, we lift the average. I guarantee you we lift the, uh, the average. Um, so um, use a rigorous, uh, documented test preparation process, such as that offered by uh, HR Jetpack. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, Dennis. Yeah, you, you've hit a lot of great points, and I'll I'll pass it over to you, Cheryl. You know, in your experience, is there is there anything else that you would add in terms of preparation? Well, and I will just agree with everything that's been said up to this point prior by Haley and by Dennis. And just, I'll just share this. I was teaching human resources for numbers of years and I really needed the support <laughs> of, a, of a course like this to help me change my thinking to be specific around the, the outcomes that I needed to get for this exam. Because whether you're a practitioner or whether you're an instructor or scholar, there's still the body of knowledge that SHRM has pulled together and they want you to be able to demonstrate that you have acquired. So uh, we talked about the resources that we provide, they're outstanding. 
top of the line, but I wanted to touch on just a couple of small things additional to that. And that would be things like, first of all, be po positive and have a use can do attitude. You can do this. And then uh, so much of it, and Dennis mentioned this as well as did Haley, it's the preparation. Uh, you know, when you, when you come to the study, pro to the courses, you know, take it very seriously, be, take the time and, and building the time and having the time requires you to build a team. And I want the folks to realize they're not by themselves. They're not going on this journey endeavor alone. They have a strong support system that they need to tap into to help them prepare. And that includes, of course, the SHRM resources and, and the HR Jetpack team, but also you will need to get your employer, you will need to get your family on board. Those folks are part of your team because you will need to be organized. You will need to dedicate time to study, time to read. And there are so many times when I would have rather been out doing something else, but the serious <laughs> nature of achieving this goal was so important to me that I had to have the support of family members, I had to have a dedicated room in the house, certain times where mom was not to be bothered, disturbed. You know, it just really takes all of that. But that involves bring, getting your team together, right? Your team could extend to other members of your class. Your team could extend to subject matter experts that you may uh, be familiar with that may perhaps you have not spoken to on a regular basis, but they can help you uh, better understand a particular subject that you may not work with every day. So as you get into this, those are some of the things I wanted to reinforce that people also think about is you're not doing this alone. You've got an awesome support system and network behind you, but that does require you to communicate with folks and to the extent that you are able, get their buy-in and get their support to help you uh, find the time, to dedicate the time as you prepare on the front end. And then you can go out and celebrate with those guys on the back end after you've gotten your certification under your belt. Right. Absolutely. Well, and you know, it's funny, you, you hit on uh, a comment that I had a student make when, when you know, we were doing kind of an in-person event talking about the certification and, you know, answering questions about the exam itself in preparation. And she said she told her family, you know, and she told her, her, her child, it's mommy's study time. So I'm going over here in this room and you're going to stay here with, you know, dad and whomever other family member and I'm going to go study. So, um, you know, having that uh, support is, is very helpful. It's a, and it's a part of it. I agree. I agree. It's absolutely a part of it. Uh, great. All right. Well, so real quick here. So let's let's I'll keep on moving with a couple more official questions. I know I've seen a few pop up in the chat section. And so I've, I've answered like a couple and I'll, I'll try to do that as well. And I know I saw Dennis, you were uh, commenting as well. So we'll, we'll come back to that in just a moment. Okay. Um, but talking just a little bit more about preparation. You know, uh, Haley, I'll go to you. If you have anything else to add around, you know, what's it like? You know, having uh, you know, being online, you know, in, in one of uh, your classes, you know, you've you've been with us now and, and doing these types of classes. You know, is there anything that you'd want to add in terms of, of preparation and uh, being online? Any additional comments? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, so uh, doing a course online, you know, isn't isn't for everyone. You know, let's sort of just just say that out loud. But what I will say is we provide just as much as what you would get in a classroom as well as online, right? So I am always available, you know, on or offline, obviously not at midnight because I'm going to be sleeping, but I make myself available to my students, you know, during the uh, during the time frame of my class. I'm also very much in touch with some of the students that finish my class in early December mm -hmm. still. Um, so we, you know, we really put a lot of effort into it you know our job is to uh, you know really emphasize the fact that you should be reading 
um, a lot. <laughs> you know, sign you homework to read on purpose. Um, you know, we will, you know, continuously remind you to use the self-service portal because that has wonderful things in it. You know, flashcards, which I personally use a lot with, with my students. Um, you know, and, and there's models and videos and all the rest of it. So, you know, we, we give you everything to succeed that you need. We give that to you and it's up to you then what you want to do with it, right? And so we see a lot of, we, we see a really, a lot of people that pass um, because they've taken a class with us. Um, and, you know, a lot of people will also give us the feedback like, hey, we passed, you guys are awesome, but we also did the hard work as well. Right? Oh, yeah. so, and it's, it's two-sided coin. So, um but I think teaching online is is fun. Um, you know, you can also build relationships with people online as well. I mean, I, you know, I personally really like the online fact that people can sit comfortably at home on their couch, um, you know, and learn about HR as well. So um, I, I think it's I think it's a good thing, and we certainly do everything that we can to prepare you um, to to pass this exam. Uh. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ella. You know, you again some additional great points. Um, you know, in being in class with us. And I will say, you know, as a as another point too, in terms of the hours, I know this question hasn't popped up yet, but I, I do get this question. In terms of the hours of preparation, I mean, we're looking at 60 plus, you know, upwards of a hundred. And that's including the 36 hours that you might Correct. spend in class. So there is, and to your point, Haley, with, with you know, the awesome feedback that we get from students, but also um, the feedback that we get in, in that time that you got to dedicate to reading the books and so on. So uh, I won't go too far down that path because I have a couple of official questions, more official questions to ask. And then I wanted to get to a couple questions that are in the chat that I think are, are fabulous. They're great um, about, about the exam itself. Um, so here we go. Dennis, you touched upon this. So I'll ask if you have anything to add to it. You mentioned endurance, having to sit and focus for four hours. Um, how do you prevent burnout? What, what's a way to do that in terms of this exam? Well, I've said it once, uh, start with the end in mind. And I, and I absolutely encourage longer uh, practice test taking sessions. Um, ask yourself the question, what's the longest class that you ever sat in in college? Uh, and my answer is always 90 minutes was enough, man. I just out of here. Um, well, this is four hours of intense one after another best practice questions. And so that's a very different experience. I, I don't understate when I say that this is the uh, both the most rigorous four hours that you're going to invest, uh, but also the quickest because your brain needs to be really hyper focused uh, throughout that four hour period. That's stamina. That's also not how we work as human beings. Typically, we take a break, we step away from the email, um, we go into a meeting or whatever. And so this is a very different experience that uh, I insist uh, HR professionals need to intentionally prepare for. Um, the other thing I'd say is, uh, and I see a question that popped up uh, about uh, uh, what's the passing score for the 160 questions? Uh, well, Cheryl clarified that 30 of them don't count. So it's really a passing score against 130 questions. And I go to the Educational Partners uh, Coordinator Conference uh, as frequently as I can. I, I certainly intend to go this year. Um, and the test writing panel uh, typically has a breakout session and I usually attend. Um, and of course, they're not going to give you a number. They're not going to say you need to answer 90 or 95 or 98 of the 130 counting questions um, uh, correctly. Otherwise, you won't pass. They, they're not going to give you uh, a number. And number two, I've been led to believe, and I do believe, that they also uh, base the passing rate on that particular cohort. In other words, it's normed for uh, the CP students that are uh, taking the test and the SCP students that are taking the test in each cycle. At least that's what I've been led to believe. So my my message to test takers is you do not need to be perfect. 
you do not need to be perfect. That should not be the goal because if, if perfection is your goal, you're gonna get knocked off balance by the first set of difficult questions. And by the way, that'll be question one or three or five. So don't strive for perfection, strive for profic proficiency. And to Cheryl's point earlier about the situational judgment questions, we oftentimes in HR, in our normal day-to-day -day practice, uh, kind of just say to ourselves, we take a pause and we say, boy, you can't make this stuff up. Well, the situational judgment questions, by the way, are very much like our day-to-day -day HR experience. I'm a practicing HR professional. I respect that among the students that I work with. This is real. This is real content that you're gonna need to wrestle with either prospectively or that you've wrestled with in your career. And so I really appreciate that they've structured the test in that way and you must prepare, um, just you must prepare. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And you know, and I was looking over, you know, while we've been hearing your response, Dennis, in our, in our chat section and, you know, it's, it's exactly the idea of the marathon, you wouldn't, take a bunch of short runs and then all of a sudden go off and do a marathon. You know, you would build and focus on, you know, spend that time because there are practice assessments Correct. within the learning portal. You'd you'd spend that time building that endurance and understanding, you know, what what are these questions, you know, looking for and okay, they absolutely are based on real scenarios and in some instances you know, the way that we would do something in our workplace might differ from what the best answer is on the exam. And I think that's one of the trickiest parts about this exam is, is that difference and, and finding that balance. Um, you know, so I'll speak to a moment real quick to the 200 uh, passing score. Um, you know, it's the, the scoring method for these, these exams. There's a particular method that's used. And part of the reason why you can't find, well, how many can, do I, can I get wrong? Um, is because they're weighted differently. Right. So each of the questions, and also depends on the CP versus the SCP, so the CP right. be certified. And then there's the senior certified. So, you know, touching upon earlier when we talked about the differences in questions um, and, and the, 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 how difficult they are, you know, versus you know, being a senior certified professional, um, there's different weightings in those questions. So although a passing score is 200, there's no way to be able to tell how many I can get wrong. But I will add that once you've taken the exam, you'll get a preliminary result. And then several weeks later, you'll get an official report. It's actually available online in your profile with SHRM. You'll get an official report of how you did. And it'll give you kind of a breakdown of your score uh, as matched to that, that 200 um, range. So it's it's complicated is, is kind of the easy answer. Um, but there is more information out there about the scoring method. If, if anybody's interested in that, you know, I could certainly, you know, share the official uh, information about it. So just wanted to add that out there. Okay, so we have about five minutes left. And I know, um, I do have one more, you know, official question. And then again, want to try to get back to any other comments that, that we have. I tried to answer a couple of questions while we've been uh, chatting here. Um, so Cheryl. Yes. Okay. What should someone do the night before the exam? Should they be like cramming? Like what? What do you think? Yeah, absolutely not. And I will just preface this by talking about the, the marathon. I love the discussion about the marathon. My uh, son, only son, was a college football player for the University of Florida Gators. So I've seen a lot of time around athletes. And, and what you've said is so key. It's the preparation. It's the work that goes into the preparation before, in those weeks before, which build your proficiency, which build your confidence, and which build your um, ability to go into that exam with a, with a confidence that you've done your part and you will be successful. 
Dennis talked about the mindset. That is so important. So here we are. We've done those things. We're at the night before the big event, the big game. What do you do? Well, the first thing you want to do is get organized for the next day. You want to check the weather, see what the weather is going to be like. Lay out your clothes. Prepare your breakfast, perhaps, in advance. Make sure there's gas in the car <laughs> and check the drive time to the test center. You know, those little things can, at the last minute, become hiccups for you that cause a lot of stress. So preparation, even in those things, is helpful. Of course, you probably may have a few last minute things you want to review as preparation for the exam. But for the most part, you should be focused on eating a good meal, you know, and minimizing like caffeine, for example, because sleep is so important the night before the exam. So if you're drinking a lot of colas or soda or even er some herbal teas containing a lot of caffeine, that may help disturb your sleep. Right. So on top of your natural anxiety, now you're putting caffeine in your system and it really could negatively affect your ability to get a good night's sleep. So perhaps you want to do some things to relax and help relieve any stress that you have. Maybe a little light exercise, a little walk, perhaps some stretching. If you're into yoga, do a little bit of that, perhaps. But mostly you want to practice uh, breathing and above all, just visualize the positive outcome. See yourself. The power of the mind is, is really just now really being, beginning to be tapped into. And you can visualize yourself in the test center. You can visualize yourself successfully answering those questions. <clears throat> and the last tip I will say before I'll transfer it back to you is please remember to set your alarm clock so that, <laughs> <laughs> yes. so that you don't oversleep. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. The little yeah. thing can get you. <laughs> It is. It's, it's so true. I, I mean, I could share some stories. I know we're almost out of time, unfortunately. Um, and, and I could definitely share some stories. So check the weather. Check the weather. Definitely. That's that's a thing, <laughs> especially if you're in the north. <laughs> yes. Gas in the car. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. So I know we're, we're almost out of time. And I appreciate, Dennis, I just noticed that you were responding to an earlier um, message, a uh, question that we had. So I really appreciate that. So folks, keep your eye out there uh, on the chat box and, and take a look at some of the comments that we've tried to um, respond to. You know, and I just see uh, one that just actually came up from Michelle. So, um, you know, with the, the couple minutes that we have left, um, does it make sense to take both the SCP and the CP? Well, now, that's a very interesting question because I've seen some folks take that CP first and then go from there in terms of, you know, what is it next that they, they need to do? You know, should they go for that SCP? So it gives them a foundation. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll look to you, Dennis. I, I think you've had some experience with that. You know, do you have any closing remarks before I, I end our, our meeting today? Well, just briefly, uh, I definitely believe that the HR professional that makes this commitment accomplished their goal and earn a certification. So if they've not previously taken these certification exams before, I definitely place a heavy emphasis. Exercise your own judgment, but please, please focus in a way that you know you can be successful. And so I always do recommend starting with a CP exam. Um, nevertheless, I've had HR professionals that have said, no, I'm going for SCP right out of the gate and by golly, I'm going to be successful. And thankfully, uh, I've been able to support them. But mainly, as Cheryl and Haley have pointed out, it was their work that accomplished it. I've had people go from zero to 60 uh, and, and, you know, in, in at light speed and accomplish their SCP. Um, 
it depends on the background of the individual there's a little bit of my perspective on it because the scp exam is as we've all talked about a uh, highly strategic very large complex sophisticated organizations global yeah. content cultural content not all of us uh, in small and mid-sized organizations have been exposed to that so i'm always clear about the cautions i do believe starting with the cp is is wise and prudent um and you know Either test, both tests, nevertheless require any uh, an exceptional amount of personal commitment and discipline to be successful. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. Thank you so much, Dennis, and thank all of you. I see that we are at the end of our time together. It always goes by so quickly. I appreciate everyone's comments, your questions. We will be following up with you. Um, and certainly try to do our best to continue to answer those questions that you have even after uh, today's session. And I just want to say another special thank you to, to all of our panelists. You know, I really appreciate your time and sharing your expertise with us. And for those of you who are you know, looking for an online uh, prep opportunity prep course, especially with some of our panelists here today, check us out at hrjetpack.com. And certainly feel free to send me a note offline as well with any questions that you might have. And I'll be happy to help you as best I can. And feel free to you know, link in with us as well. So with that, I'm going to let everybody go now. And uh, thank you again, everyone, for your time. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Uh, all right. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Great again. Bye. <laughs>